Okay. Hello again, everyone. I'm Stephen Beach, the Executive Director of the Wellesley Community Center, and we have yet another exciting event coming up Saturday, February 25th, at the tail end of school vacation with my good friend and associate, Mr. David Oliver. David is a veteran entertainer and magician. He's nationally known in the business. Is a very good friend of our very own Gil Stubbs, where we produced Gil Stubbs World of Magic for three seasons. David here was instrumental in helping with many episodes and provided us a lot of insight and guidance to the material and managing the audiences and so forth. So we have the good fortune of having him come for a show, two shows actually, a matinee and an evening show in, I believe, Babson Hall. That sounds right to me. So uh, David has been in the business since before college, and he's sporting his trademark purple tie, as you will uh, see in some of the clips that we produce here. But this is a lot of fun. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you got involved with this very unique line of work. Well, first of all, thanks for having me, and I'm looking forward to the shows on the uh, 25th. Well, I started doing magic around age six. I saw a magician on television. His name was Mark Wilson. Uh, Mr. Wilson had a TV show broadcast out of California, and I saw him make his wife disappear, and I said, when I grow up, I want to do that. I so, do bumps. Thank you. Yes, everyone's a Canadian. And uh, this pretty much started my, my interest in the art of magic. Uh, from then on in, uh, family members and relatives would uh, present me with magic kits and books for holidays and birthdays uh, for the rest of my life. Paid my way through college doing magic shows. And after college, I tried a few other jobs, but uh, my hobby of magic was more exciting, made more money than my regular jobs. I gave myself a five-year plan and accomplished all of those goals within six months. And I haven't looked back. When you were uh, a young man, you told your priest that you wanted to be a priest. Now, what was behind that? Well, at one point, I was very enthralled with the, all the ceremonial stuff uh, within the Catholic Church, which is how I was raised. And I thought being a priest would be a wonderful idea. And I applied to seminary, but a local priest who was a dear friend of our family took me aside and said, you really don't want to be a priest. I've known you long enough. I think you just want an audience every week <laughs> and sort of sort of uh, dissuade me from following the priesthood. Well, okay. So uh, <laughs> that takes its own form of uh, magical engagement, I suppose. Indeed. So we have a lot of fun together. Uh, uh, some of the acts will involve, I think, your one of your rope tricks, which hopefully we'll be able to uh, show. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of audience participation uh, both with children as well as grown-ups? Yep, throughout the entire show, um, which will be about 75 minutes or so, maybe a little longer, maybe a little bit less. Uh, there's a lot of magic and music, comedy, plenty of audience participation. There are even a couple of moments in the show where the entire audience helps at the same time, mm. and they're going to feel the magic happen in their very own hands. Okay. So besides uh, David being a, a funny guy and an amazing performer, he also has a very unique personal history uh, for years, um, many magicians will use doves and other props for part of their act. And you developed a viral condition as a result of the dove's dander or some such thing. And yeah, I had, uh, I had birds in my show, trained doves in my show for almost 30 years. They would appear, they would disappear, they would levitate, uh, do all sorts of, of things. And they were, they were quite good to me for almost 30 years. Unfortunately, their dander or the dust that they produce from their feathers uh, would bounce off of their droppings, picking up bacteria and, and all sorts of other nasty things. And over time, by inhaling it over and over again through car rides and airplane rides, living in hotels and traveling, uh, I contracted a disease called hypersensitive pneumonitis, uh, otherwise known as bird fancier's lung or farmer's lung. Uh, usually farmers who work with chickens or ducks will also get this disease. And it caused a hardening of fibrosis in my lungs. The birds themselves were not diseased. Uh, but their droppings uh, would, would connect with their dander. And I spent so much time with the birds that I was inhaling it constantly. Mm -hmm. So that resulted in uh, a lot of lung issues, a lot of breathing issues over the next few years. And uh, just over three years ago, I was in Mass General Hospital on life support. 
Uh, and at one point, uh, after six weeks on life support, they had given me two days to live. Mm -hmm. And miracle of miracles, a set of lungs showed up uh, because of a, a selfless organ donor. And I had a double lung transplant surgery where they replaced both lungs. Now, one of the surgical team, uh, Dr. Jose Garcia, is that correct? Mm -hmm. He was the one who designed and fabricated the machine that helped you buy time, for lack of a better correct. phrase, until the tissue, the donated tissue, became available. Correct. Uh, he developed a portable ECMO machine, extracorporeal oxygenation uh, or membrane oxygenation. We just call it ECMO. It's easier. Uh, he invented this machine that basically uh, put oxygen directly into my heart, into my bloodstream, and then removed the, the old blood and kept replacing it because my lungs had essentially stopped. And I was on this machine for six weeks. Most people are on this machine 10 to 12 days, and if lungs do not show up, unfortunately, that's it. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to survive for six weeks. Uh, I did have some complications along the way, uh, including three cardiac arrests but they were able to bring me back each time and once the lungs were, were installed the next five months of recovery at mass general um i'm here you know if i hadn't brought this up no one would have had any idea looking at you today you look like you got right off the plane and you're ready to go to work so well, i am and i did <laughs> <laughs> anyway saturday February 25th, Babson Hall, a 4.30 matinee, correct? Correct. And a 7.30 show? Uh, I believe it's either 7.15. I think it's 7.15 was on the okay. uh, Pardon schedule. Me. Either or. So show up at 7. You'll be there in time. Uh, <laughs> you can buy tickets online. You go to the homepage of the Wellesley Community Center, and there's a, uh, a PayPal link on our homepage. Uh, tickets are $20 a person. Seniors and kids are $12.00. Take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, it's not every day that David's able to come and invest time with us, but it's going to be a real treat for the community, and we hope you can take advantage of this. David, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Okay. Look forward to seeing you guys at the show. Radio. See you next time. Thank you.